Recording in progress. Okay. Sure I'm not muted? All right. I think we're I think we're all good. All right. <clears throat> so let's finish up. We got problem 14. So here we go. All right. So we had finished analyzing part A and part B of this guy. So this was the rod where there's um, heat generation in the middle or in the like the rod portion. This be nice if I had a yeah this portion right here that's where we've got some heat generation um, but in the sleeve uh, I do not in the sleeve I have no heat generation let's see. yeah okay go away all right um, and so since I did not have any heat generation in the sleeve I was able to apply Ohm's analogy um, and there you go and so that's what I did but now uh, that's what I did find TR1 and TR2, but now I've got to find the temperature in the rod itself where I do have heat generation. And so I, I've got to apply my heat diffusion equation and get a temperature distribution and then plug in X equals zero to figure out what the temperature is at X equals zero. So let's do that. All right, so I've got, got to go back to my cylindrical coordinates. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my equation sheet here. And I'm going to look at my cylindrical coordinates and instead of writing everything down again, I'm just going to cross out the things that need to be crossed out. So let's go ahead and cross out this and this and this because it's steady state, right? So the, the, the first two terms are crossed out because we're saying that it's one dimensional heat transfer only dependent in or the temperature only changes in that radial direction. Um, and then, of course, it's steady state. So. Let's go write that write the that little bit down. So for part C, I'm going to apply my heat diffusion equation. So is part A TR1 and part B TR2? Mm-hmm. All right. My pin's being annoying on me here. I thought maybe if I change one of my... Let me change my pin tip, see if that's what it is. Maybe that will maybe that will fix things all right so when I apply my heat diffusion equation I've got D dr and then I've got in parentheses I've got R DT dr um, equals and then there's a Q dot over K on the right hand side so q dot over k um, and then there was an uh, one over r on the left hand side and i'm going to multiply both sides by r to get rid of that so there's my r and then i'd integrate both sides right multiply both sides by dr integrate both sides um, and then i'd be left with r dt dr equals and now i've got q dot r squared over uh, k plus i've got a constant of an integration over here 
all right? And then I'm going to divide by R. Wouldn't it be negative? Uh, yeah, it would be negative. Thank you. There is a negative there. Um, and so, okay. And then I'm going to divide by R on both sides. So I have DT, DR equals negative Q dot R over K plus B1 over R. And then I'll integrate again. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. So we're only assuming that the heat generation is zero when it's going through the sleeve and then when it gets into the rod, now there's heat generation? No, so you, you just have energy, gener uh, you just got that Q dot occurring and it's a volumetric phenomena. It's just occurring within that rod. So for A and B, we did, there was no, there's no Q dot occurring in this medium. And so we were, we were, it was okay to use Ohm's, uh, Ohm's analogy, but within the rod itself, you've got, for some reason, you've got some sort of, um, some phenomena that's causing a volumetric heat generation, right? Maybe it's a, maybe it's a fuel rod or you've got some sort of chemical reaction going on there, or maybe you're passing an electric current through that, through that rod. Okay. Thank okay. You. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So now I'm going to integrate both sides. So now I have T as a function of R and on the right hand side. So this will be negative Q dot R squared over 2K plus and then I've got C1, and it'll be natural log R plus, um, and then I'll have another constant of an integration, C2. All right, and so now I need to take advantage of, well, I need to figure out, I got two, un, uh, two constants of integration, so I need to get two boundary conditions. So my first boundary condition so boundary condition one, let me see something real quick. Hold on a minute. Let me just, hold on a minute. This helps. Maybe recalibrating it will help. All right. So the first boundary condition is going to be taking advantage of thermal symmetry. Uh, would there be a two in the denominator for the first derivative? Yes. Yes. So it's actually. Hmm. So that's R. R squared. Uh. Mm hmm that becomes two that becomes two yep you're absolutely right and this one over here becomes four. Oh, stop it Oh, forget it. Fine. All right. So my first boundary condition is going to be taking advantage of thermal symmetry. So right in the middle at R equals zero, there's no heat flux. So let's start there. So negative K and it's DT DR And that's going to be dt dr at um, r equals zero. All right. So this is going to be negative q dot r over 2k plus 
C1 over R. So all of this is equal to zero. Um, and that R on the denominator is kind of problematic. So if I multiply both sides um, of this equation right here by R, then that kind of that problem goes away. So I'm left with this guy equals and all of this we multiplied, I guess, by negative K, although it doesn't really matter. But the only thing. Yeah, so this would now be this would be Q dot R squared over 2 plus C1 equals 0. And the only thing that's going to make that true, and that's at R equals 0, so 0 squared, um, that would give me C1 has to be equal to 0. All right. And then my other boundary condition, boundary condition 2, so the other one is I've got a, well, I know what the temperature is on the outside, right, at R1. I know what that one is because I've already calculated it in part A. So I know what, I know what this temperature is right here. So it was, well, let's see, what was it? 71.9 degrees Celsius. Yeah. So T at R1. is equal to 79.9 degrees Celsius. So this is going to be, I'm looking at this equation right here. So I've got negative Q dot and then it'll be R1 squared. So it'll be negative Q dot over R1 squared over 4K. plus my C, well, C1 is zero, so it's just plus C2, isn't it? And so I've got an equation for C2. Um, and so I can plug things in. So C2 at R1, um, it would be 79.9 degrees Celsius plus Q dot R1 squared over 4K. Um, so I have, uh, well, I don't have a value for C2, but I do when we plug in to get T at R equals zero, I do have a value for that. And so this one ends up being 191.79. And that's degrees Celsius. Right. All right. Let's go ahead and let's move on to our uh, let's move on to fins. All right. So it looks pretty. The fins are kind of they they look a little bit intimidating because there's a whole bunch of equations. Um, but it's really not, it's not that bad. Um, so fins are um, just extended surfaces and the whole point of them is to increase heat transfer. And they do that by increasing the area through which you have heat transfer. Um, and so that first, there were two videos on fins. The first one went through the mathematics of applying the um, differential equation, the heat diffusion equation, and integrating. We ended up having to put, um, we put our uh, temperature in terms of this theta here. And the reason that we did that is just to make the math look a little bit better. Um, just so you know what to do. Sure. Uh, okay, yeah, we, we, we did that to make the math a little bit easier. Um, and we applied two boundary conditions. The first one was uh, that the temperature at the base of that fin. So if our, t if our, here's our base, here's our fin. And so this is the temperature uh, at our base. Um, 
So our first boundary condition is at x equals zero, Tb is the temperature at the base. And then the other boundary conditions are either case A, B, C, or D. So case A takes into consideration that you have conduction or convection all along the outer surface of that fin, as well as at the very, very tip, there's a little bit of surface area there through which heat transfer occurs. And so you can see that case A, it's the equations that you get are pretty complicated looking. You've got a lot of hyperbolic functions and, and whatnot. Um, and while it is the most accurate, it's probably the, not the most user-friendly um, equation, set of equations. So yes, it's more accurate, but we don't really need to be that terribly accurate in this class. And so I'm gonna get rid of, I won't be doing, we won't be using this guy right here. The next one is the adiabatic tip condition. And so this one is, this one is taking into consideration, okay, well, I have convection along the length of that, of that fin, but I'm going to ignore the heat transfer at the end. And sometimes it, you know, you truly don't have heat transfer at the end. Like if it's an insulated tip, then you really don't have any heat transfer. Um, but what we can do is we can, we can model an uninsulated tip as, um, as with this case. And we just take in, we just say, okay, well, we'll pretend that there's a little bit extra length on the end, a little bit of extra length on the end. And that way we take into consideration just a tiny bit more area through which heat transfer can occur. So we'll talk about using a corrected length. You'll see that there's two down there that I circled, uh, one for a rectangular fin, one for a cylindrical pin fin. All right, so that's a possibility. Um, case C is a very specific case, and that would be if, if we have a particular temperature at the end of that tip. Um, and while there are, we could work some problems like that, just for time's sake, we're not going to. So really, it's just going to be either case B or case D. So you could see if you look at the equations for case D for an infinitely long fin, um, the equation for the temperature distribution, which we really aren't going to do anything with, and the, the heat transfer rate Q, um, those, are, are, those are a lot more simpler, um, right? You don't have any hyperbolic tangents. You don't have any hyperbolic cosines. You've just got, you've got an exponential function and then you've got this uh, parameter M. So a lot more easy to use. An infinite fin doesn't mean that it's a mile long. It means that it's long enough such that the tip of the fin has come into thermal equilibrium with, uh, with, the, with the environment. So if you were looking at the temperature distribution here, it would look like, like this, right? Where out here, it goes from T, T B to T infinity right? TB is at the top, T infinity is at the bottom. Yeah. Come on. Okay. All right. So we also have these other parameters. We've got a um, effectiveness. So that's the epsilon that you see down here. So I'm going to keep on scrolling. Oh, by the way, you can use that infinite fin approximation if, so you can use this if the parameter M L is greater than, I wanted to say less than, is greater than or equal to 2.65. Okay, so we'll, we'll, when we work our problems, we'll start out by just calculating M and L and, and seeing if that's, if that's something that we can approximate. All right, the effectiveness, this is the heat transfer rate of the fin 
over the heat transfer rate if you didn't have a fin. So basically you've, you've, you've snapped off that fin and you're just considering the denominator would be the heat transfer of that area uh, of the cross-sectional area that, that, that was covered up. Um, so the bottom part, even though it doesn't, it kind of doesn't look like it, that's Newton's law of cooling. H times the cross-sectional area through which heat transfer occurs times that delta T, which is T, that theta B is TB minus T infinity. And then you've got to the right of that, you've got your um, efficiency of your fin. So this one is the heat transfer rate of the fin over the maximum possible heat transfer rate, which would be the case if the entire fin was at the base temperature. So you were kind of like maximizing that delta T, right? If you look over here, you can see that as you go along the length of that, of that fin, the delta T between the fin and the environment gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so the driving force for that heat transfer gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But if somehow you were able to keep that, that temperature of the fin uh, at, at a constant TB, you would maximize that heat transfer. So that's what the denominator is, is being calculated with. All right. Um, right, so let's keep on going. All right, so next one. All right, so we have a brass pin in here. Hmm. Kind of tempted to yeah, I'm having some technical issues here. Let's see if we can plow on through. Hopefully it's okay. All right, so we have brass rod, 100 millimeters long. So the length of this guy is 0 0.1 meter. Um, and it's five meters and uh, five millimeters in diameter. So I'll put a little D is equal to uh, zero point zero zero five meters extends horizontally from a casting at 200 degrees so this guy is at 200 degrees and that's the temperature of our base all right the rod is in uh, is in an air environment and this is going to be T infinity And we've got a convective heat transfer coefficient of 30 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Okay. And we want to know what the fin effectiveness is and what the fin efficiency is. So, all right, perfect. Let's go ahead and get that. Um, okay. So, yeah, find the fin effectiveness, so A, fin effectiveness, B, we want to find the fin efficiency. All right. Um, I'm going to assume that it's one dimensional, steady state, and Q dot is equal to zero. So steady state, Q dot is equal to zero, and it's one dimensional. All right. Guys, hold on just a second. I'm I am having some issues with my with my tablet. Let me just I'm going to turn off my screen just for a hot second see if I can figure out what's going on, okay? So, I'm going to turn on my
Recording in progress. Okay, guys. I think we're good. I just, I could not stand with the, uh, hopefully, hopefully whatever I did fixed it. Okay. All right. Things were being laggy and I wasn't going to be able to deal with that for, for that long. So where's my little wheel? Okay. Much better. All right. So we need to find the fin effectiveness and the efficiency. Hooray. I'm so happy it's being a little bit more responsive. Okay. So, um, all right, so I need to find the effectiveness. So the effectiveness, again, this guy, all oh, so much better. Oh, so beautiful. So it's the um, effectiveness of the fin, or it's the uh, heat transfer rate over the, of the fin over um, the heat transfer rate that we would have without the, without the fin. So it's H times that cross-sectional area times theta B. And as far as QF goes, we need to figure out, okay, am I going to model it as case A or case B? Oh, so much better. All right, not case A or case B. Sorry, I was getting excited there. Not case A or case B. Case B or case D. So B or D. And it'd be B, we could do B with a corrected length. Remember, because that was the adiabatic tip one. And then case D is that it's an infinitely long fin such that it's long enough that um, there's the, the tip of it has come into thermal equilibrium with the, um, with the environment. So we need to figure out that M, L, um, and see if that's greater than or equal to 2.5. So... So I need to calculate M. So M is not mass. It's a fin parameter. And it's on your heat transfer packet over here. Um, so it's this guy, that guy right there. So it's going to be the square root of HP over KAC. So H uh, P over K. A, C, and then of course we have to take our the square root of this thing. Um, so our H is given to us. This is our 30 watts uh, per meter squared Kelvin. Does assume say 2D? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, it's 1D. That was when my my tablet was saying you don't want to teach tonight. It's 1D. <laughs> All right. And then my perimeter, well, it's a it's a pin fin, so it's a circular cross-sectional area, so the perimeter is just pi d. So pi times d, so our and our diameter was 0 0.005 meters. So 0 0.005 meters. Oh, I've never been so grateful for having things work right. <laughs> And then my K value, what was he again? So K value was, oh, they didn't give it to us, uh, but that's okay. So on a test, I would, I'm going to give you the K value. You don't need to look it up, um, but you can look it up. So for brass, 133, 133 watts per meter Kelvin is what we've got. So 133 watts per meter Kelvin. I'm going to put that over here. 133 watts per meter Kelvin. Um, and then you've got your cross-sectional area, which is going to be pi d squared over 4. So 0 0.005 meters. This guy is going to be squared. And then it's over 4, so I'm going to put the 4 in the numerator. Stop it. Awesome. Awesome. And so if you go through and you look at the what the units are going to be, the units are actually uh, going to be, and it's a little bit strange, but your meter, uh, the it's going to be one over meter. So meter to the negative one is what it's going to be. Um, Where so did the four come from again? Pi d squared over four, because it's a cross-sectional area. And then I just didn't want to write the denominator of a denominator, so I just put it in the numerator. 
Do you, do you see it? Hopefully. So. Yes. Thank yeah, you. yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. All right. So then I've got an, an M value. P represents a uh, perimeter. Aiden. Um, all right. So I've got a value of 13.43. You are welcome. 13.43. And then the units here are meters to the negative one. So it's strange because it's like M equals 13.43 M to the negative one. It's, it's meters to the negative one. Um, and then when I multiply it by L, so ML, so your length was um, 0.1 meters, so this guy is going to be 1.343, um, and then, you know, meters times me meters over meters would be nothing, and so it's a unitless parameter. Um, and so all I can say is it's not, uh, I would say this is less than 2.65, so we're going to use case B. with a corrected length. So let's calculate that corrected length. So if you look on your, your heat transfer packet, um, it's gonna be for the cylinder, the one for the cylinder. So L plus D over four. So L over, um, I'm sorry, L plus D over four. Is that still a square root? Yes, this is a square root. I'm sorry about that. Yes, and it's still, it is 13.43. The number's right, it's just I didn't put that square root. Yeah. So when I calculate this guy, uh, that corrected length, well, I don't know. What is it? So this is 0 0.1 plus the diameter, which is 0 0.005 meters divided by 4. Uh, so zero. 0 0.100125 meters. Okay, so that's my corrected length. All right, so I'm gonna use case B. Still got to find that Q. I would have had to find M anyway. So if you're thinking, well, that was a waste of time. No, not really, because we're gonna need that M parameter anyway, it won't matter. So, all right, so let me go to case, case B. And here we are. So case B and that heat transfer rate is capital M hyperbolic tangent M. See, we didn't waste our time. M times L. So let's go write that. And then if you look down, if you look down here, we do have an equation for capital M, that parameter. Okay. So we would say, actually, I'm just going to, I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to plug it in. So this guy is going to be on the top. Remember, it's capital M. Well, I'll just capital M hyperbolic tangent of M. And it's going to be not L, but LC. Because I'm going to use that corrected length um, over. Same thing over here, H times the cross-sectional area times theta B. So let's kind of tease this out a little bit. So that capital M, capital M is the square root of H times the perimeter KAC. So um, H times the perimeter times K times AC. And there is a theta B here. Um, and then you've got that hyperbolic tangent. So it does clean up just a little bit, kind of. And then we've got HAC down here. And then I got a theta B. And again, this, that is going to go away. I'll just kind of, instead of rewriting everything, I'll just say, well, my cross-sectional area, just keep in mind, this is just pi D squared over four. Your perimeter, or, uh, P is your perimeter. So it's the pi D, um, and then everything else is just stuff that's given to us. Um, and so we end up, if we plug things in, yeah, you do need a calculator that will give you a hyperbolic tangent. Um, so if you don't have one, I mean, I assume that everybody's got a graphing calculator or something, um, that's fine to use on the test. Just make sure that you, you know how to plug in a hyperbolic tangent. Um, if you find yourself 
that you you don't have that for the for the test just reach out to me and and we'll figure something out so but i get a 52.2 52.2 and that's my effectiveness hooray yay and chalet okie dokie let's keep on going keep on keep it on next we need the um efficiency oh and by the way what we would say we would say if that effectiveness if it's greater than two then you would say the use of the fin is justified the fin use is justified because depending on what that k value is of your fin you could be um, actually reducing heat transfer because the that that fin does represent there is a resistance to heat transfer in that fin and so um yeah, so it's you, you got to figure out is the is the fin actually um, is it actually providing more cooling uh, than it would be without it. All right, so now let's do the efficiency. So this is also a QF. And then on the bottom, it's the heat transfer, the, the maximum possible heat transfer that you could get, which is the case, again, if that entire fin stayed at uh, T of the base, right? And so you maximize that delta T all along the length. So this becomes H times the area through which you've got heat transfer, which is the area of the fin, right? A, F, um, and then you do have a little theta b over here so that's newton's law of cooling that af and i'm going to put it over here that af is calculated based on that that little extra uh length on the end of it that we're pretending is there to account for the fact that well we do actually have heat transfer through that little bit of area on the tip um, so this is going to be pi d l but again it's going to be lc the little the little bit extra Pi D L C. All right. So my QF, I've already calculated, right? That's that's this thing over here. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna rewrite it, make sure I got everything. So I'll have H P K A C. That's a square root. We got a theta B. We have a hyperbolic tangent. And then we have the hyperbolic tangent of MLC. We've already calculated. Remember, you already calculated that M <laughs> up there. So again, wasn't, wa wasn't a waste. Um, and then on the bottom, I've got HAF. Again, the AF is pi DLC um, times theta B, which looks like it doesn't even matter whether we knew that or not, because it gets divided out. So we have all the things that we need. I end up calculating a value of 0 0.644 or 64.4%. Okay. All right. Let's do another one. So the next one, I'm going to make it so you could still still see here. So we have um, a rod and it's sticking out from a wall. Um, but like during the, the like for the first little bit, it's insulated. Um, and I will say there's some stuff that's left off of this problem statement. Um, so I'm going to put it now. All right. So we have this L insulation. So this guy is 0.2 meters the diameter over here let's put that this guy is 25 millimeters so 0 0.025 meters perfect um we've got the temperature of the wall so this is 200 degrees celsius um we've got a k value so we've got a k value got a k of uh 60 60 watts per meter Kelvin. Okay, okay, okay. Um, ambient temperature. So T infinity. This guy is 25 degrees Celsius. We do have a, heat, a convective heat transfer coefficient of 15 watts per meter squared Kelvin. All right. So 
Now we're going to find some stuff. So the first thing that we've got, we're going to derive an expression for t naught. So let me point out what that is. I'm going to write it. I'm going to derive an expression and value. <laughs> Or uh, actually, yeah, we won't be able to get a value yet based on what I've said. So just a, an expression for uh, T naught. So T naught is going to be the temperature right here at that location right there. So we have a location right here. This is the 200 degrees. And then the other one is T naught, which is what we're looking for. So we need to get some way to solve for that. Um, and then B is saying for an L naught, and it's kind of silly because if we, it says for an L naught that's equal to 0 0.2 meters, which, you know, sure doesn't look like two meters to me <laughs> based on what they said the L of the insulation is, but it's fine, let's go with it. If that L naught is 0 0.2 meters, we want to find some stuff. We want to find, okay, I'll make this I. Uh, will the T max, and if you look at the problem statement, it says to avoid damage to the cables, the temperature of the rod at its exposed surface has to be below a surface, but below an operating temperature of, of 100 degrees. Uh, Celsius. So what they're saying is that all this, this right here, uh, starting right there, it cannot have, it cannot go above 100 degrees, right? Within the insulation, that's fine. Um, but apparently it's, you know, you don't want it to touch things. Um, it's at the, to avoid damaging the cables that might come in contact with that um, uninsulated portion. So what we're asking is, will T max of 100 degrees be exceeded and if we think about well where might it be exceeded where's the highest temperature that you're going to see in that in that rod well it's going to be right at um right at x like right at where t naught is right t naught this guy right here is going to be the highest temperature and then it's going to cool down along the length of that guy so in other words, we're going to know, we're wanting to know, um, is T naught, is that greater than or equal to T max? And really just, it says the operating limit is 100 degrees. So if it's 100 degrees, okay, great. Then I guess that's okay. Although a safety factor might be nice. All right. And then we want the effectiveness of that fin. And then we also want the efficiency of our fin. Perfect. All right. So same, same assumptions. So I am going to assume steady state, one dimensional, Q dots equal to zero. And so I'm going to use Ohm's analogy. And if you look at our equation sheet, you will actually see some, you'll see that you've got a R here. So this is a thermal resistance defined for a fin. Um, and you can see it's, you know, you think about what Ohm's analogy was. There was a, there was a delta T. That's your theta B. There was a Q. Well, that's the heat transfer rate of that fin. And then there was a thermal resistance and we're, this, that's, that's what's on the left there. Okay. Um, so perfect. Let's go back over here. So I am going to apply Ohm's analogy. All right. So let me draw my little circuit here, see what I got. All right, so I'll have this temperature is going to be my 200, the wall temperature. So TW, which is again, 200 degrees Celsius. And then you've got bump, 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 bump. You've got a thermal resistance through this little section right here. 
So that's just a con, uh, con, um, resistance to conduction. So it's going to be L of the insulation. So L of my insulation over KA. So KA. And I got to think about what is that area? Well, that area is the cross-sectional area through which heat transfer is occurring. What's right? Your cross-sectional area, pi d squared over 4, that's the area through which heat transfer is going perpendicularly. So just kind of make that, I'll kind of, and maybe I'll put like a, because sometimes it's like the areas are the ones that it's like super annoying to keep a track of. So, but our, our cross-sectional area, so this is going to be pi d squared over 4. Um, do I have a value for that? I don't, but I've got a di uh, I've got d. I mean, it's just a plug and chunk kind of thing, right? And then the next one, the next uh, temperature here is going to be the temperature right here, which is our T naught. And that's the thing that I want to find out. So there's our T naught. And now I have the thermal resistance to um, uh, due to the fin. And on my equation sheet, it was written like, okay, well, this is theta B over QF. Perfect. What did L say? Insulation. Yeah, it's it's this one right here. Sorry, L L with a little subscript I in S. It's it's point two. All right, and then that last temperature node. You're welcome. That last temperature node is actually the T infinity. It's the what 25 degrees Celsius. Perfect. All right. What does that say? L one A S. <laughs> Insulation I N S. It's, okay. yeah, 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 it's the same as this little guy up here, but yeah. All right, so let's figure it, let's, uh, let's at least get our governing equation for, um, for, to figure out T naught. So I know that the heat transfer going through here is the same all the way through, and it's the Q of the fin. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define Q of the fin between this guy. I'm going to define it between this guy, and then I'll set them equal to one another. So I have 200 degrees Celsius minus T naught. And then I have down here... So I've got L of the insulation, so 0.2 meters. And then I've got K, which was 60. So 60 watts per meter Kelvin times pi D squared. D was my 0 0.025 meters. We'll square that, and then it's pi d squared over 4, so I'm going to bring the 4 up to my numerator up here. Perfect. All right, so that Q, let me kind of center this just a little bit, make it a little bit prettier. Um, that Q is equal to the Q between on that next little squiggly there. So it's going to be T naught minus T infinity over... All right, well, I got a theta B over QF. So I got to deal with that. I do have to deal with that. So I need to find QF. So got to find that. Find QF. And this this right here, that's kind of the the jumping off point for um uh, this this is my governing equation for part A, because the Q with the fin is going to require me to assume something about that length, um, which is what I'm doing in this guy right here. Okay, so based on a length, based on this length being 0.2 meters, let's calculate what that QF is.
and they called it L naught. That's fine. Um, so what you notice, if you look at the picture there, and actually let's go look at it, you'll see at the very end, there's an insulation right at the tip. And so that is case B, that fits it to a T. And you do not need to make any, um, you don't need to calculate a corrected length or anything like that. Um, it, that is what it is, right? It's with an insulated tip. So that is case B. All right. So again, this is an adiabatic tip. So it's case B. No corrected length. All right. And so if I look at my equation sheet, that QF is equal to M times hyperbolic tangent of ML. Again, no corrected length. That L, of course, is that little L naught, which is 0.2 meters. All right, so I need to plug in some numbers, calculate a, you know, an M and an L and all that stuff. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and plug it in. So my, my capital M is H times the perimeter times K times AC and take the square root of that. So it is H times the perimeter, perimeter being I D um, times K times my cross-sectional area, pi D squared over four times my hyperbolic tangent of mm, the lowercase m. Uh, it's kind of ugly. Just a lot of stuff to plug in. Uh, so it's going to be so this guy right here, HP over KAC. So H H times P ID over K A C A C being pi D squared over four, put that one up there. And then all of this times L. All right, oh, and I forgot something. I forgot something. Part of that M term um, is a theta. Theta B. All right, so it all looks just terrible. I mean, it doesn't look great, um, but you can calculate this. This ends up being, uh, let's see. I end up getting 13.37, 13.37 uh, watts. And so now I can just plug that in up here. Um, your theta B, remember him, he's just TB minus your T infinity. So it's going to be the 200 minus 25, I think. Yeah, 25. All right. All right. And so if we look at this, if we look at this happy equation here, it really is. It's one equation and one unknown. One equation, one unknown. It's ugly. You'll probably miss a parenthesis somewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, if I plug things in, I get a T naught value of 109.21 degrees Celsius. So, you know, the answer to, to I guess, B1, that's, that's this guy right here. Um, and the answer is yes.
it is going to that temperature is going to be exceeded uh, so the question is that is that 13.84 the qf is 13.37 Okay, I have two more things that I have to calculate here. Oh, I do need to add another page. Okay, perfect. All right, so the other things I needed to find I need to define the effectiveness. So again, this is QF over what that Q would be if you snapped that fin off. So it's going to be pi, um, I'm sorry, it's going to be Newton's law of cooling H times that cross-sectional area, which is pi D squared over four times delta T which on your equation sheet is written as theta b, but it's just tb minus t infinity. Um, I already have the qf, that's my 13.37, uh, um, and so I end up getting an effectiveness of 22. So if they asked, is the use of the fin justified? I would say yes, because that effectiveness is greater than two. And then for part, can you repeat what the cross-sectional area is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the cross well the cross-sectional area is like um here's my fin okay i mean that looks terrible but that's my fin and then if i snapped the fin off here's my cross-sectional area and so the effectiveness is comparing the heat transfer for the first one and for the second one where the only heat transfer that you have is through that when can you classify if it's a fin or not um So, um, I mean, good question. So I guess you're, you're, you're asking, how can I say that this is a fin? Um, so, I mean, you don't have to, um, but your analysis gets really ugly pretty quickly. Um, so that, that. The first video of the two videos uh, on fins started from okay I've I've got this I've got this um, this fin and or I've got this um, extension from a surface and I need to apply my heat uh, diffusion equation to it and I've got heat transfer along the length of this guy and um, yeah, so it's you, you you start off by applying that heat diffusion equation, but it got the math got ugly pretty quickly, and so the solution to that was kind of ugly very quickly. Yeah, it's just an extended surface. A fin is an extended surface that's put there just for the sole purpose of pulling heat off of off of whatever it's attached to. So I, I, I guess in, you know, in practice, it will be, you'll know it's a fin because it's, it's just this, right? You think about like, um, uh, on a CPU, like that little heat sink with a little like fin sticking up. Um, yeah. The thing that we've got right here, like where we're looking at single fins, usually you're going to be looking at an array as opposed to just a single fin and that's what we're going to look at next all right so efficiency all right so that's qf again over what it would be if this whole thing was at the at the base temperature so it's going to be h times the area of the fin because that's the you're you're looking you're looking at heat transfer along that whole length there area of the fin times that theta b all right 
So I got a QF, I've got an H, the area of my fin is pi D squared over L, and then I have a theta B. And I have all of those parameters, and I got a QF, I already calculated that to be 13 and change. Um, and so I've got enough information to plug things in. So I've got 67.4%. Yeah. Okay. All right. So like I said, y you know, um, if you're, if you're using a fin, you're not, you're probably not going to be using one. You're going to be using multiples. Okay, so we've got a, an array of fins here. So we have a hot surface at 100 degrees. So the base of this guy is 100 degrees. And we're trying to pull heat off of it. Okay. And so we attach all these fins to it to, to try to pull heat off of off of that surface. Um, they give us the, they give us some dimensions of those fins. They also tell us that the temperature, oops, I'm sorry, the temperature of the surrounding medium, they tell us that. So T infinity is 30 degrees Celsius. And then we've got heat transfer coefficient of 35. They put it as watts per meter squared degree Celsius. I just like Kelvin. So I just like writing Kelvin. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I need to find... I'm supposed to find a couple of things. Number one, find the efficiency of a single fin. Okie dokie. Then I need to find the efficiency of the... In oh, I'm sorry. not That's, that's Q. <laughs> uh, efficiency. So efficiency of a single fin. Efficiency of the entire array. So I'll put a little not for a subscript there um, and then the rate of heat transfer from this whole thing so c so q and i'm going to call it total because it's going to be for the for this whole unit here um entire thing they've just shown a little section of it but the entire thing is a one by one meter section so i'll just kind of keep that in the back of my mind same assumptions one dimensional, one dimensional steady state Q dot is equal to zero. And those are the assumptions that were made in the derivation of all those cases, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so let's get this first guy. All right, so our efficiency again it's QF over maximum heat transfer rate, which would be if the whole fin was at 100 degrees there. All right, so I've got H times AF times, um, that's it, and it times theta B. Okie dokie. Um, and of course, our Our H value or our AF is the fin area. Um, I'm going to come back on that because I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to be uh, modeling this. I don't know if I'm going to use case B or case A. So we'll just we'll just wait a hot second. So. So I would say case A. B or case D. Which one am I going to use? Okay, so case D is what I'm going to use if ML is greater than or equal to 2.65. Um, if it's not, then I'll use a corrected length here. All right, so got to calculate M. Let's start there. So M is equal to, and i got a square root here, uh, square root of H times the parameter, perimeter over KAC. It's a K, <laughs> and that's an AC. I'm sorry, I probably should have written that to the right a little bit. Um, so let's plug in some numbers. So 35 watts per meter squared Kelvin. 
Then I've got a perimeter. So pi times D. Uh, D being looks like it's 0.25 centimeters on my figure. So 0.0025. Meters. I'll square that. No, do I don't. I don't need to square that. That's a perimeter. Sorry. Over k. Um, k being two thirty-seven. So two thirty-seven, and this is watts per meter kelvin. And then the cross-sectional area. I have pi d squared, zero point zero zero two five meters over four i'm going to bring that four up on the top just to make it look prettier um, and then of course i got to take the square root of all this jazz all right what do i get i end up getting 15.37 15.37 uh over meters <laughs> meters to the negative one and so if i calculate ml and that's not based on a corrected length it's just calculate it based on l um, but my l if my l is three centimeters 0 0.03 meters um, i'll have 15.37 meters to the negative one times my length 0 0.03 meters um, and i end up getting 0 0.4611 so yeah gotta use oh stop it no no i'm gonna use uh case b and i'm gonna use a corrected length so let's calculate what that is so i have a, a pin thin so i have l plus d over four right so my L was three centimeters. My diameter is 0.25 centimeters. Um, I'm going to calculate that guy in terms of meters. I end up getting 0 0.0306. 0 0.0306 and it is meters. Perfect. All righty. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Um, so let's go ahead and calculate QF. So I'm going to calculate QF. So my QF, if I look at case B, that fin uh, is pulling off heat at a rate of M times my hyperbolic tangent times M, L, and I need to use the corrected link there. And then my M, again, is H. It's going to be the square root yeah it's going to be the square root of h uh h p k a c times that theta b and then i've got the hyperbolic tangent okay all right so i've at least got stuff that i can throw in there um and so going back to my equation up here I'll bring him down here all right so now I've got that fin effectiveness so it's QF on the top so that's going to be H times the perimeter which is pi D times K times the cross-sectional area which is pi D squared over four um yep and then the, all of this is i got a square root here then i got a theta b and then a hyperbolic tangent of m l c and then all of this that's my qf that's that one and then all of that needs to be over this one okay so this is going to be h times the area of my fin which is now calculated based on that corrected length so it's going to be uh pi d l c all right
right? So there's the area of the fin times theta b. And it looks like that theta b is going to cancel out. I have everything that I need. Already calculated my m. Already calculated the lc. So this is just a plug and chug operation. So what do I have? I end up getting 93%. So 0 0.93, 93%. Right. Next thing it asks me to do is calculate the effect or the efficiency of the entire array. So let's do that. And I am going to need, I'm going to need myself another piece of paper. Go ahead and get ready for that. Perfect. All right. All right. So I got to find... Um, find in or in the efficiency for the entire array. So let's go look at our equation sheet and see what we got. So it's all all that stuff down there, right? So it's it's the total Q for the entire thing, for the entire unit, the entire array over the maximum, which would be the case if that entire thing and all the fins were at the same temperature as the base. Um, and so I've got that second part is pretty easy to calculate because it's based on the entire area, all the exposed area to that to that T infinity. Um, and I do kind of try to guide you through calculating all those areas you can you can reason it out but yeah are we assuming the fin is hollow for the area uh, -uh. the fin is yes yeah, so, uh, yeah the the fin being hollow or not wouldn't it, and it's it's definitely not because you're you're Here's my fin. So the two, the mechanisms of heat transfer are going to be, you've got Q by conduction, right? And so you have to have something in there. You got Q by con con conduction, but then you also have Q by convection to the environment as you go down. Yeah, along that surface area. What is this efficiency that we're finding stand for for the O? O is the the little knot the the little subscript knot is saying okay well for 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 a the efficiency oh darn the efficiency the efficiency of a single fin that's that and then this guy is the efficiency of this whole one by one section is that kind of clear um. So, and then there was another question for the fin area. We multiply the perimeter by the length. So I'm a little confused how that gets area. That's the area along the outside of this. So it's right. So the, the, the area along the length is just the perimeter times the length. Yeah. Okay. Let's go down here. All right, so we need to find the effectiveness, or I'm sorry, the efficiency of the entire array. And on my equation sheet, let's just write down what we got. So on my equation sheet, I have QT over H, and then the total area, and then the theta B. Let's write that down. So QT, and then H times theta, uh, I'm sorry, Theta is there, but times the total area of that array that's exposed to the the fluid that's doing the convection or responsible for convection, and then our theta b. Well, I have too many unknowns there. I don't know QT, although that's something I need to calculate in part C, so probably we'll come back to this equation. So instead of using that one, we're going to use the equation that is right next to it is this this guy right there so let's write that down make sure that we know what all those areas are okay okay so this is one minus n times the area of the fin of an individual fin over the total area 
that's exposed to um, you know the fluid uh, that's at 30 degrees times uh, 1 minus the efficiency of a single fin all right so let's just kind of piece by piece put this together um, and see what we got and I'm gonna get my calculator up here make sure I got stuff Okay. All right. So we've got in, which we'll deal with in a second. Let's get just get the area of our fin. Uh, actually, we might need to deal with that fin or the in. So in is the number of fins. So, okay. So I need to kind of, if you go back up to your picture, I'm going to do my best to sort of like look at how the spacing is so if this is here's one fin here's another here's another here's another so they if you we actually i'm going to scroll in here so it looks like the spacing between them is uh point zero uh point six centimeters um, and it looks like they are measuring that from like the center to the center. So let's go over here. So instead of looking from the center to the center, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I would kind of move those lines up and say, well, from here to here, this is 0.6 meters, or, uh, not 0.6 meters, 0.6 centimeters. Um, and then the same thing um, the other way. So right, this distance right here would be 0 0.6 centimeters. So it looks like like each little fin there So each fin needs an area of and it'll be 0 0.006 meters squared and they say that we have a square that's a one by one meter. So we have a total of one meter squared to work with, right? That's the, that's the base plate on the base plate. And so if I want to figure out the number of fins that I can fit on this thing, um, well, I'm just going to take that one meter squared and I'm going to divide it by my 0 0.006 meters. Um, that gives me a value of, let's see, 27,777. 0.78, and I don't think I can fit that 70, so I'm going to just say 27,777 fins. All right, perfect. All righty. So now, yeah, and actually, Actually, since it's a square, I think what I need to do is I need to take the square root of this guy. Yeah, because it needs, it'll be like the same this way as it is this way. So I need to have the same number this way and this way. So I'm going to take the square root of that actually. 
So let's see, two, seven, 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 seven. Take the square root of that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So square root of two, seven, 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 seven gives me 166.7. So on that one by one stretch, this is one meter, and this was one meter. Then in this direction, I'd have 166, I can't have a 0 0.7, 166 pins or fins, pin fins. And then on this direction, I'd have an, uh, another, uh, Right, this would be 166 by 166. So the total number would be 166 times 166. So this total number, I'll put a question mark, would actually be Um, 166 squared, which would be 27,556 uh, fins. So my N is not this one, but 27,556. I'm going to box that just because, just because. that reasoning sound okay? All right. So again, kind of go back. I'm going to put that here and I'm going to copy this equation right here. Bring it. Oh. Stop it. Oh. bring you down here. There we go. Kind of worked. All right. So this guy down here is going to be darn it. The total area. All right. So we've got in that's this guy. Um, and now we need to calculate, we've got the N of F, or N of F, we've got the effectiveness for a single fin, and we got that to be 0 0.93. Um, area of the fin, so that's this guy right here. So area of my fin is going to be just the area of a single fin. So pi D times L C. Um, and I do have a value for that. I think, uh, let's see. I do 0 0.00024 and it's meters squared. All right, so that's that one. And then the very last one I need to get is this guy right there. So let's get him. So this is the total area. All right, so this is the area of all of those fins. So it's going to be all of those fins in times the area of a single fin. Um, but then you also have, um, you also have the area of the exposed base. So the area of the exposed base, A, B, and this, this is all, it is all on your, uh, on your equation sheet. You can see A, B is, is, uh, is on their surface, the exposed base. And just reason it out, it's the area A of the base plate, so it's a one by one base plate, 
and then but you now you need to subtract all the little cross sectional areas that are covered up by the fins so minus n times the cross sectional area so this guy is going to be n times a f plus area of the base so it's going to be big area one by one minus n times a cross-sectional area. So let's just plug the numbers in here. So I have 27,556 times the area of a fin we set, or of a single fin, 0 0.0024 uh, meters squared plus area. We got a one meter squared area minus another 27,556 times the cross-sectional area so pi d zero point i'm gonna have to scooch this over a little bit i think uh what was my diameter uh, my diameter was point zero zero two five meters squared divided by four that was that total area All right, so let's plug that in, actually. What we got? Yes, that's fine. All right, so 27,556. So that times 0 0.0024. This one. Uh, I think my... it's 0 0.00024 for if you're, like, calculating it. Ah, ah thank you, thank you. Uh, let's make this smaller so I can fit it in. Thank you. Sorry. All right, minus. So I end up getting, and if I Hopefully, okay. If you get something different, just let me know. But I've got 7.47, .47, and that's meters squared. So now let's plug some stuff in. So I have 1 minus 27,556 times 0 0.00024 meters squared divided by my 7.47 meters squared times my 1 minus 0 0.93. All right, and that should be this guy for the entire array. Uh, let's see. All right, I've got 0 0.938, which seems reasonable. 0 0.938. Is this about the length of a test <laughs> question for this weekend? Um, we'll talk about it in a hot second. Sound good? All right, so that's my uh, ef efficiency for an array. And then last thing was our QT. So this is answer for B. And then the last one is going to be um, asking about what is the total heat transfer rate. And I know this one because this one was QT over uh, H times my total area times theta B. All right. And I've already got the total area somewhere over there. Mm, yep. The 7.47 number. So let's see what I end up getting. So I've got, so it'll be this times that guy times H 35 times our delta T, which is 70. 
All right, so hopefully... All right, so I end up getting 17,186 watts. Unless I type something in. All right. So you will see problem 18 down below. We are not going to go over that right now. Um, I actually did not go over this in this morning section. Um, and so I do not plan to give you a problem with an array that does not have cylindrical pins. Okay. I mean, it's not, there's not really any great big difference. Um, it's just, you know, different way of calculating the area, obviously. Um, but there was a request to, to have just another problem dealing with an array so you can have some practice with that. Um, and so that is on the unit to playlist on YouTube. So if you want to want to watch that just for an extra problem, you are welcome to. And hopefully that will help you. Um, but as far as the test goes, it'll open tomorrow morning. Full disclosure, I have not put it up yet, but it will. But it'll open tomorrow morning. Uh, hopefully that will be okay. So I've got five conceptual questions. Just like that last time, this is going to be 10 points a piece. Um, then you'll have one question that is just going to be Ohm's analogy. So all that stuff that we did on day one that really wasn't that bad. Um, and then you'll have one question and it will either be, you need to find, it'll, it'll be dealing with heat generation such that it will require you to find temperature as a function of X or L, uh, not L, uh, R. So one of those where you got to apply the heat diffusion equation, get your boundary conditions um, and get, get an equation for the temperature distribution or one of these fin problems. Those last two questions will be equally weighted. One will, they'll both be worth 45 points a piece. So at least with the Ohm's analogy, that's really not too bad. I think everybody seemed okay with that. It's, well, it's hard for me to read you guys as, uh, you know, how y'all are feeling about it. Um, but just, you know, I, I think everybody was okay uh, with Ohm's analogy. That wasn't so bad. Probably the last question will be the one that, that yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the fin problems, they look terrible. They really do, but it's all on your equation sheet. Yeah. So it's just, let me pick the right equation and plug in some, some crap and hopefully I plug it in correctly in my calculator. Okay. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, sure, Cole. So there was a question. So for the fin problems, we have to figure out the amount of fins. And not go off how many are shown on the diagram yeah 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 um yeah so that with this um yeah there was a question on like this is clearly not 27,000 or 25,000 um pins they're just showing a specific section of it um let's see quick I, I don't remember. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I thought maybe I'd be able to give you a little, little something, but yeah. So go based on what the what the what the wording says, not necessarily the the temp uh, the the figure. 
Um, so the question is, it's open till Sunday night this time, not Monday. Yeah, I'm going to keep with Monday. I'll keep it with Monday just because um, on the syllabus, what it originally said is that tests will be open till Monday night. So I'll go with what I originally said, and that's fine. So yes, the test will be open till Monday night. So if you want to wait, you can. Where was the theta B calculated? So theta B, all theta B is, it's just, and it's on your equation sheet, it's TB minus T infinity. That's it. So 100 minus 30. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. I will. I'll just turn on my five minute timer. And then if you have questions, just pipe on up. Okay. Thank you, guys.